Doors and windows are meant to be easy, but in ARCHICAD, there is so many details that we just don't think about. So today I'm sharing my favorite doors and windows right in to the ultimate ARCHICAD template. Let's dive straight into this tutorial and explain exactly what's going on. As you can see, we have a series of doors on the right and windows on the left. There are a few more to make, which I'll go through in this tutorial. Moving to the ground floor plan, and starting with our doors. So we have four doors available in front of us and I've custom tailored these ones specific to what's available to us here in Australia. I'm gonna start with the most basic door that's seen in almost every residential project and commercial project here, and that's the square bend frame, all of which I've added into our favorites. So if we go into openings, doors, internal general, there's four DT favorites at the moment. I've only created four at 820 leaf sizes because there's a few more things to fine tune as we move through this template build. For example, adding all the parameters to the doors so that when we schedule them, it's perfectly aligned. I don't wanna go ahead and create every single door size and then have to go back and edit everything to make sure all those parameters are correct. I will rather create them once, make sure the parameters are correct later on, and then we can go and duplicate them for every other door style and size. So the first door you'll see in front of us is the square bend frame. And this has been modeled on the Metrol door frames themselves. So the square bend frames down the bottom, you'll see standard profiles in a 95 mil and a 114 mil overall. I've used the 114 by default because we're using generally timber framing at 90 by 45s or we're using steel studs at 92 mil. Only if you're going for office fit outs using a 70 by 35 or potentially using a 64 mil frame is when you're gonna be using the smaller size. But for me personally and residential templates, that's quite rare. So we're sticking to the 114. As you can see, all of that information has been correlated into this door frame. So if we start from the very start, you can get an 820, by 240 almost anywhere. It is a very, very basic off the shelf size. Next, we have our door style, which again is a very plain style. If you wanted to use a different style for your doors, you'd go ahead and adjust them as you need. However, I've kept it as the flush door frame for a specific reason, which I'll get to a little bit later on. And of course, handle eight down the bottom is just one of the nicest in my opinion that models well and also will render well in the future. Moving through our settings in this, it is the double rebate door, which you can see here is starting to showcase that double rebate. It's exactly what we're seeing in the Metrol profile. And if we scroll down, it's been perfectly set up to sit into the wall and align the way we need it to. So if we were to pull up our Metrol dimensions here on the left and use our ARCHICAD dimensions on the right, we'll see that we have a 40 mil frame, which aligns with the 40 mil on the left-hand side. The 40 mil generally provides a tolerance for 40 mil thick doors. Now, most internal doors from Corinthian or from Bunnings are only 35 millimeters thick. So you'll see 35 millimeters come into the leaf thickness. If we're going for solid core, which is most of the time for any high-end architectural home, that'll get pumped up to 40, which perfectly aligns with the frame and we have a nice finished seam. The door stop thickness is 72 millimeters in this scenario, same as that on Metrol. And of course, overall frame thickness 152, which is 19 plus 114 plus 19. Hopefully you're following along with that basic maths. Overall, that gives us a perfect square bend door frame with an 820 by 2040, 35 mil door leaf. And the reason I've selected the square bend frame as the default for the budget entry door frames is because as you can see in this preview, a 35 mil door frame, even a 40 mil door frame, is going to sit almost flush on one side. On the opposite side, you'll see quite a bit of rebate and quite a bit of the door frame, but generally speaking from the outside passage, which way it will swing out, it'll be nice and seamless. Working through the rest of the settings, everything has been left generally basic. There's not too much in here that's worth going through. Obviously, it's been adjusted to mitre joints and all of the frame and leaf materials have been adjusted. So in most cases, a door frame will always be painted a high gloss or semi-gloss for additional impact protection, whereas the door will be finished in a matte surface. So that's why I've differentiated those two items. Again, in the future, when we go into 3D modeling and 3D rendering, that's gonna make life so easy. The reveal has been pushed back 22 millimeters, which makes sure it aligns perfectly in the wall. If we were to remove that 22 millimeters and hit enter, you'll see the door frame is pushed all the way on one side which is not 
how it is designed or how it is actually installed. So if we were to flick through the Metrol photos here, you'll see it sits proud of the finished plasterboard. And finally, to look at that door in full 3D, we'll see it sits proud of the plasterboard in 3D. It sits flush on one side. And on the other side, we have a little bit of detail. We have that square bend. And again, the frame sits proud. That's a perfect starting point for our doors. But there are so many more better doors, nicer doors, architectural doors available to us on the market. So let's move into that before we come into our cavity sliders. The next door frame we're going to be looking at is the Easy Concept Easy Jam. Now, Metrol has something very similar, but this is the creme of the crop. It is the best architectural door frame available to us at the moment in Australia. If we scroll down, basically what it is, is it's a flush, seamless door on one side and a very minimal door frame on the other so if we skim through these photos available to us on the website you'll see that if it's an inward swing door the plasterboard is completely flushed around you don't see the door frame it is all painted the same and then the door swings away so it's flush on the inside whereas when the door swings out it's again flush on the outside in this particular scenario they're using butt hinges so you can see the hinges protruding from the door but with doors like this generally we'd use butterfly concealed hinges so that when they're perfectly aligned and flushed to the face of the wall, you wouldn't see any hinders. You would just see the door handles protruding so you could know where that door is. If I open up the settings of that door frame and jump to the leaf settings, you'll see once again, we're still using that 35 mil door, 820 by 2040, because that's a standard leaf. However, the frame thickness and everything itself changes. It is basically perfectly aligned with a wall. And in this scenario, it's been set up for a 90 mil timber frame with 10 mil plaster on both sides. If we show our 3D preview, that becomes super prevalent. You can see just the door frame is proud in this render. And if we flick to the back side, you can just see the painted plasterboard, which has of course been modeled in our 3D settings. So our door frame itself is stucco white fine, exactly the same as our plasterboard and our leaf is titanium white. We could paint it all the same color if we wanted to. If we do want that door to appear different, then we would have it painted slightly different. And if that door were to be installed in a plasterboard wall on one side, you would see no frame at all. Whilst on the other side, again, you would see no frame because it is finished seamlessly into the plasterboard and painted over the same color. So with our square bend here on the left, you see the frame proud protrude, whereas on the right hand side, you see a modern contemporary architectural door finish with absolutely no frame. And the best part is these are real products. So when you're documenting, when you're designing and you're thinking about it, then you can actually purchase these doors when it comes time for construction. There is nothing worse than modeling something and not being able to find the real product in the real world. Now we move on to something a little bit more elegant, something a little bit more architectural, but a completely different style of door. That's our Manhattan series from Corinthian. The Manhattan door series is awesome. First of all, they're steel look doors. If you've ever gotten a steel door quoted, it's something like eight to $10,000 a door. It is ridiculously expensive because steel doors are all custom made. Now, there's a purpose and a place for it, absolutely. However, if we're working with a medium budget in an architectural home and we're not looking to spend $16,000 for some bi-parting doors like this in the middle, we can easily do it for a fraction of that. This door, for instance, is approximately $1,000 comparatively to that $8,000 mark. It isn't as nice as steel doors, absolutely not, don't get me wrong, but it is still a very nice premium product. And it comes with a series of beautiful hardware to match anything that you might be looking for. So that's exactly what this door has been designed and replicated with. It is using the square bend frame. You don't necessarily have to use it. You can, of course, use the Easy Jam door frame that we have here with the single rebate. You don't have to use the square bend frame. However, with something like this, it seems to be a little bit more of an appropriate style because if you were to have a steel door, it would have a steel frame and it would look something like this. So we're replicating very, very high-end architecture for a fraction of the cost. The settings have been duplicated for the square bend frame, of course. However, the leaf has changed to a HV grid, all replicated to match that of a Manhattan series Corinthian door. And of course, color matched perfectly as well. If we look at that door in 3D, you'll see it's obviously significantly nicer as an internal door than anything else that we've talked about so far but it is also significantly more expensive. Eventually, I will go through and add costings into this 
to be able to use the ArcCAD model as a starting base, but with pricing moving so rapidly at the moment, I'm gonna leave that to the very end of this tutorial build. If we were to open all three of these doors, you would see that frame once again, proud in two scenarios and completely disappearing in the third. So we have our standard door all the way on the right. We have our upgraded architectural door in the middle. And of course we have our steel look, but not steel door on the very left. Each one perfectly set up, ready to use. Last but not least in our door category is of course our cavity slider door. With timber framing, cavity sliders are absolutely perfect and they've increased in quality significantly over the last decade or so. Once again, this cavity slider is using the Easy Jam system. And most cavity slider systems have a timber pre-built cavity ready for that door to slide in and then we're using our frames themselves. So in this scenario, if we're using it from Easy Concept themselves, we'd be able to get that as an all-in-one package. Looking at that 3D door, of course, we have our cavity built in behind, which basically just allows us to understand how far back and how much space we need in that frame to be able to install that door. We don't want to pop a door in like this and then find out on site that it doesn't fit because we haven't allowed enough space. And of course, as a cavity slider, we want that to be a little bit more premium, a little bit more upmarket. So it has been designed with that Easy Jam complete flush frame system. Of course, if you wanted to have a square bend, it could, but I believe this is the nicest and most appropriate architectural choice. I'll jump in the middle here to let you know that the Ultimate Arcade template is available through Patreon. It's down in the description if you want to grab a copy of it. I've made it as cheap as I possibly can for anybody that wants to download it. Once you subscribe, you can start and stop at any time and the template is yours to keep forever. Obviously, there is a long, long way to go with this template until it's fully complete. So you're getting in on the ground floor and helping me build the absolute best ArchiCAD template available on the market. Now that covers our internal doors, which as you probably found out, there's a lot more internal doors than you would have originally thought. There's so many things to think about, so many little details, but once they're set up, they're perfect to use for almost every scenario. Which leads us to our windows. Windows are one of my pet peeves. For whatever reason, every single window frame is different. Every single window frame is a slightly different size, a slightly different thickness, or a slightly different depth. It drives me absolutely nuts. However, it is something that you have to meticulously think about when designing and documenting. Personally, I've opted to use the capital aluminium framing in this template. Now, before I go any further, none of this is sponsored by any of these companies. It's just items are generally used in construction and day-to-day -day operations. And Capro's frames are not necessarily the best. They're not necessarily the worst. They're not the most expensive and they're not the cheapest. They're a frame that is going to be applicable for almost every job until you start moving into that next tier. And to be completely honest, the reason I went with Capro is because their website is so user-friendly. You can find everything you need in an instant. So for example, this future line casement window, if I scroll down to the bottom, I know there's three frame options available to me, 100 mil, 100 mil, and 150 mil. And I've opted to use the future line for almost every single frame that I've been able to put into this template. For one specific reason, the future line from Capital is the default for any standard double glazed or single glazed option, but is also the default for thermally broken glass. And you can go to Family Broken or you can go to UPVC. But aluminium frames, in my opinion, are just that little bit nicer, a little bit more architectural, and they don't get diminished by the Australian sun. There's a time and a place for UPVC, absolutely. But if I had a choice, I'd be moving to Family Broken aluminium. Personally, the budget just has to stretch a lot. And if we check out Capro's Family Broken range, you'll see it is all the future line. And if we go through the individual items, you'll see they have a future line, but it isn't Family Broken. So it's the one frame that we can use for almost every scenario. Now, I'll try to cover this one a little bit quicker because there's a lot more technicalities in it that you don't really need to know, and they're all repetitive across every window. So as you'll see, we have our hinge door, we have our sliding window, fixed panel, double hung, casement, and awning. There's other window options that I'll slowly add into this template, like louvers and sliding doors, pivot doors, bifolding doors, and all of that. But this is my starting point for today. If I start with this massive sliding door, I'll be able to explain everything for the rest of them in one go. So first of all, we're using unit dimensions as the overall sizing method. And I've done this specifically. So this sliding window is five meters by 1600 high. And that is the absolute maximum capital can make in a future line frame of this sliding window. So I know if I activate this favorite, 
which again is under openings, windows, and then sliding, DT sliding of course. I know that's the absolute maximum I can make that window before I need a second frame and a second window. I can make it any size smaller than that, but I can't go larger. And every window in this series has been set up that way. It's the absolute maximum these panels can be from this particular company. Moving through, of course, we have our sash set up as sliding. We have our frames perfectly set up to the future line in that series. What you'll quickly notice is this is 100 by 57 millimeters, whereas a double hung is 100 by 44 millimeters, which is really frustrating when you're trying to get nice, clean architectural lines and the same window styles, because they're all just a touch different. With 100 millimeter frames, we don't have to worry too much. They'll fit in a 90 mil stud wall perfectly. But if we're using stacking doors, that increase by 50 mil every time we add a new panel, we have to think about the depth of that track. So a two sliding track would be 100 mil, that'd be easy. Just like this sliding window, it's only 100 mil. But the second we add a third door, it becomes 150. So we have to think about our wall thickness. All very complicated stuff, that's why I haven't added it into this tutorial. It will continue to build and I'll explain it more so you guys know how to document perfectly using this template in the future. Moving through further, no grid, no handles, no ventilation, of course. Painted to night sky rather than monument in this scenario. And everything else is slightly fine-tuned to perfectly align with the capital series. Otherwise, there's nothing special about this window except the fine-tuning of the frame, which is exactly identical for the rest. Our fixed window, our double hungs, our casement and our awning are all the same principles applied. The favorite is the maximum size with the frames perfectly built in. The hinge door as well, exact same concept, except it's been opened to 90 degrees in the actual 2D plan. But overall, that is it for these doors and windows as a starting point. They are all saved into the favorites under doors and under windows. So you can find them at any point in time. And that means I can go ahead, delete them from the main 3D window. So it isn't taking up additional space. Anyway, that is all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.